How are you holding up any? I think it's been already quite a long, long conference, but I think we still have the energy and the enthusiasm to continue. So I'm feeling very excited about the next session. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, same, uh, same here. We're, uh, we're nearing the end. We are, we are not there yet. Of course we have, uh, we have one more session, uh, uh, to go. Then after that, we will also have our uh, closing note where we will also have the team uh, behind the scenes. We'll call them up on stage uh, to discuss, uh, of course, the event today, but also what's coming in the future and, and what's next and all the other great initiatives uh, that C-Sharp Corner is, uh, is organizing. Great, sounds like a great plan. All right, then let's go. Last but not least, uh, we will soon welcome our next speaker on stage, uh, which is Nikita Sashtev. She is the co-founder at Luna Management, which is a model management agency. Uh, Nikita is running with what I've seen, uh, limitless uh, creativity, thousands of talents in uh, all shapes, sizes, races, ages, very diverse. And uh, what I've also discovered is that Nikita's company is working with well-known global brands, uh, including Porsche, Gucci, Breitling, Nespresso, a lot of big names and many more out there. Um, so yeah, with that, Nikita brings a lot of experience and knowledge that she will share with us today. And her session, uh, uh, the last session of today, will be about marketing and communication in the fintech industry. So I say, let's get ready and let's call Nikita on stage. Nice to meet you. Thanks for that introduction. Hi, Nikita. Welcome. It's it's great to have you here. Um, we have seen you had a very impressive journey. We would love to hear more from you and uh, especially to join your uh, session. And uh, wh where in the world are you right now? I'm in Houston, Texas. Oh, you're in Houston, Texas. Yeah. OK, OK, wonderful. Well, then, uh, if you're ready, the virtual stage uh, is all yours. And we'll be looking forward to uh, watching and listening to your session. Great. Um, I'll just go on to my slides now. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, you already heard an introduction uh, from the, the two wonderful ladies. So um, I started off with Luna Management and we expanded to Luna PR, which is a marketing and PR agency. So today I would like to talk about marketing and communications in the um, in the crypto, blockchain, and fintech industries, as it's very different from um, you know typical uh, you know uh, I would say the modeling world. Uh, but before I do so, I'd love to give you an introduction about myself. Um, I uh, have a degree in chemistry from uh, the University of Texas, and uh, I soon realized that I didn't want to do anything to do with chemistry and ended up doing a business degree from um, James Cook University in Singapore. Um, the only condition that my dad had was that I had to pay for my own degree this time. So um, while I was looking for jobs in Singapore, uh, I got uh, uh, stopped in a shopping mall and asked um, to uh, do a TV commercial for a hair dye brand which um, I cast it for. I got the commercial and eventually um, it basically paid off a semester of my tuition in one go. So that was really exciting. And um, since then, uh, after that uh, moment, I wanted to just continue doing those uh, commercials for as long as I could. Um, I graduated, I managed to pay off my own degree through modeling, and then I decided to eventually start my own agency, and of course my business degree helped to do that. Um, when I started my own agency, I also had a, a very big interest in cryptocurrencies, it was uh, around 2017. 
So while running the agency and while, you know, trying to be different and diversify and, you know, have, have models of uh, all, all types of, um, you know, ages, races and, and sizes, because um, I saw that gap in that market, um, I was also making videos on my social media about how amazing Bitcoin was. Um, and uh, eventually uh, I got uh, noticed by Huobi Exchange, which was the largest exchange at the time, uh, who asked me to become their host. Um, and uh, my career just kind of uh, took a, a, a fork. I continued with the modeling agency, but I also was very much interested in crypto until finally I tried to find a way to synergize my both my worlds, which was the media world and the tech world. And I decided that it's time to bring in a PR agency that can bring media into tech and raise awareness for tech. So um, that's a little bit about me. And this is a little bit about my agency. So Luna PR is a division of Luna Management. L while Luna Management uh, does talent management uh, and production, Luna PR is a marketing and PR agency which is based in Singapore. We're working internationally. As you can see, I'm currently in Houston. And uh, we have clients in um, fintech, health tech, lifestyle. Um, you know, we're uh, quite diverse, but focused on uh, tech at the same time. Uh, and um, we do things slightly differently. And um, so, so before I go forward, um, I wanted to talk about uh, what's important uh, when it comes to marketing and communicating your brand out there, especially if you're in tech. These are a few strategies that we line up that are important for any business that uh, is in tech. Uh, you know, technology businesses um, are different than the others because you're trying to make people understand something that's that's not not really maybe not very understandable. Sometimes people see tech as a different language. So it's really important to put yourself out there and make other people understand, especially if you want to grow and have user acquisition. The first step, social media put yourself out there. The next step, email marketing. Again, put yourself out there. SEO and PPC, um, you know, it, when you know someone types your brand, types in your project on Google, it's always great to be the first one on top. Um, press articles, interviews, uh, the next is influencer marketing and partnerships. Um, then we, ha we have uh, conferences and creative assets. So these are, I would say, a recipe to success for any technology company. I'll go forward here. So with a lot of our companies, we see that they, a lot of our successful companies uh, that approach us for help, we see they have a powerful team. They have a great product. They're at the right place at the right time. Some people call that luck. I think it's being at the right place at the right time. Uh, and they have value, they have a product, they have something that that keeps them, you know, that, that they want to sell or they want to showcase. But what is difficult for them is the speed. Sometimes, especially in technology, it's important to, to have speed because technology is constantly evolving and there are always people coming in with the same idea. So if you want to be the first to market, speed is vital. The next step, is um, disruptions, have a unique selling point and to highlight it. A lot of times uh, projects, they have a great product, but they don't know how to sell it. And, and the way to sell it is to really highlight what's unique about you. And then the last step is all marketing from there. Put it out there. That's that. Once you have everything in place, you just need to market it. So we like to start with influencer marketing as our first strategy. We keep a database of over 2,000 influencers globally. And we try to have a very specific requirement for our influencers. It's important to make sure that your influencers have engagement rates. A lot of times people will just look at the amount of followers and say, ah, oh, this person has 10,000 followers. Let me you know, go ahead and engage in that person. But it's important to, to look at their engagement rate to make sure that these influencers are not, you know, a bot or you know uh, or bots um it's uh, important to select influencers that are focused in your industry so 
I probably would not get a fashion influencer to, you know, highlight tech products. It's important to get a tech influencer to highlight tech products. So to make sure that they are industry focused, make sure that they keep the post up. A lot of the times uh, I've seen some clients have, you know, uh, say, Nikki, you know, uh, it's not working with my influencers. Um, they pay the influencers, they, you know, put, put the posts up and within the next day, the ads, like the, the influencer post is deleted. So it's important to specify the duration of how long you want the influencer to promote your brand. It's important to have the rights to repost what the influencer puts. And it's important that the influencer doesn't also promote competitor brands. So we really check all those, uh, before we go out there. The next thing is whenever you're trying to uh, do uh, whenever you're on social media, it's important to have a theme so that people can relate your brand when they see it. They, the same colors remind them of their brand. These are like subliminal messages that actually play a really big part and people kind of underestimate. So what we do is we look at we look at the company's logo. We look at their website, we see what colors they're using, and then we use that. We, we do a theme proposal and we use that for all social media channels. And this actually goes a long way. And the last thing with social media is we keep presence everywhere. And this is a, a good tip for anybody trying to, you know, uh, increase our social media and uh, their marketing. A lot can be done through just social media. That's why I'm emphasizing on it so much. Um, use all the channels there are so many platforms out there use all of them just be present everywhere um of course it helps having someone to manage it for you because it can take a lot of time um we do spend good uh almost half a day on our clients social medias uh you know trying to make sure that we have something on all their channels but you know it's completely worth it uh because uh, don't underestimate the power of social media the next step is email marketing and investor relations. Now, every company has uh, a different goal, of course, um, but uh, a lot of our clients uh, are startup uh, tech clients that usually want um, you know, email marketing or investor relations before they start marketing. Sometimes we see that marketing, can, marketing and uh, investment can be a chicken and egg situation where Investors want to see that there's marketing done out there and uh, to market you need some uh, funding. So so it is a very, you know, as I said, chicken and egg situation. Um, but that's why, you know, it's good to uh, go hire someone or go with a PR agency that can understand that and, and help you with that. So in our PR agency, we help our clients with investor relations. Um, it's really important to you know, make sure that, um, you know, that when marketing cannot be done, that we can help you find the sources of funding. Um, PitchBook is a really good software that we use. Um, it's slightly pricey, but um, uh, we use it as a company where you can find um, investors uh, of all kinds uh, and very targeted investors. So let's say you have a, a um, a you know mobile phone app coming out soon uh, we look at the competitors your competitors and see which investors in, invested in your competitors and then reach out to them um, uh, so that's that's one one way of our investor relation uh, strategy the other thing is email marketing so um, email marketing is a very powerful tool um, some people don't like cold calling, but we find it, uh, you know, it's a very old fashioned and, and it's been, you know, one of the uh, oldest way cold calling is one of the oldest way of marketing it goes back to the days people used to knock on your door and say, hey, look at my product. And it really helps. Um, email marketings have helped increase sale revenue. They increase leads. They improve email engagement, uh, conversion rates. They you know, um, and they, they help you build your database. Now we, there are a lot of, um, platforms you can use for email marketing. Um, we sometimes do it manually so that we can make sure that each email is targeted and, and specific to what our, you know, what, we're, what message we're trying to send across and doesn't come out too salesy. 
But uh, if you know you're in a rush and you need to you know send something quickly, then we use um, platforms like Mailchimp. So SEO and PPC, I'm sure a lot of you guys um, use this for your uh, companies, a lot of uh, CEOs and founders who are listening to this. I'm sure a lot of you guys uh, use SEO and PPC. Um, this is also one of the very important things when it comes to marketing, because as I mentioned earlier, when let's say your, your project is a um, crypto lending platform, when someone types in crypto lending platform on Google, you want your project to be the first thing that comes up. So this can be achieved by SEO and PPC. Um, SEO is more organically done, whereas PPC is uh, pay per click. So it's a uh, kind of self-explanatory, you pay for it. Um, and when in integrated, these two work best. So as you can see in my next slide, with organic searches, you get 42% results. Um, paid searches give you 53% results. Together, you can increase your exposure by 95%. I mean, this, this is really a great tool to use. The next thing is, um, as I said, I started off making a lot of video blogs. So what we do is uh, we, we think that it's very important for clients to, again, engage with influencers, not just to, oh, just retweet my comment, but to also make video blogs. Videos are one of the best ways to explain a product um, because people can visualize it. People can see you. It's like you're having a discussion with them. Um, so we find that video blogs are uh, very effective and we uh, strongly recommend uh, our clients to do, uh, you know, videos more than just uh, like writing up, a, you know, an article or, you know, medium article, which is also a good tool. Um, this offers viewers a different perspective when done uh, on a video. So there's a few types of videos uh, that uh, you can do. One is to hire an influencer and do like a uh, a video review of something of your product, uh, especially if it's in tech and it's a bit complicated. It's good to, for someone to kind of put it in layman terms. Um, the next one is um, an interview style video. Now, um, I I've hosted before for Crypto Vest and Crypto Daily, so I used to you know interview uh, and and for Hobie that's how I started. I was interviewing tons and tons of platforms, and um, why do all these big companies interview their own uh, listed tokens uh, is because they they find they find it brings more success it brings more investors investors don't have to read through you know an 18 page white paper to understand your company instead they can just watch a video and kind of hear it from the founder itself this is a very this is a very effective way as well um, and i highly recommend and for companies starting out to, um, you know, do an interview and then, you know, repost that interview again on all social media platforms, it'll bring you massive exposure. Educational videos are also another way to, um, you know, increase uh, your user database and, you know, try, try to get like a, a, a community that trusts you and, and, you know, listens and then is there like an audience, you know? So, um, it's important uh, to keep your users and audience entertained. And so we also feel that having your own video blog is a great strategy. Um, we provide uh, brand ambassadors. So uh, luckily from our talent management side, we have a lot of hosts, um, a, a lot of um, you know hostesses or hosts to, that can come in and, and you know translate your white paper into a video. Um, and we have a great production crew. So we've done this for a lot of clients. And one of our um, very successful strategies was a video blog in a few different languages. So um, I lived in Singapore for 10 years and um, we had a lot of clients that were international. Um, so we did, we used to do video blogs in Russian, Korean, Mandarin, Japanese, and English, um, because those were the, you know, countries that were very tech savvy and, and had a lot of tech investors. So we thought doing videos in different languages was a good way to, um, you know, kind of reach out to investors in those countries. Next up, uh, we have 
of press and interviews. This is also uh, very important. Uh, it helps with SEO as well. Uh, you know, it helps bring your company's name, um, brings you more exposure. Um, we have a large database uh, and a very strong relationship with journalists and publications. So we connect a lot of our clients with media podcasts and interviews with you know bloggers and influencers and hosts. Um, and um, over here, you know, these are some of our clients. So recently, we had you know a tech entrepreneur approach us who um, you know wanted more exposure. Uh, we also had you know a few a few other you know tech projects um, approach us who uh, after uh, th this company that you can see on the left over here, Ooh, it's called Ooh, um, with five O's. Um, after we released their article, uh, they actually uh, received a few calls, uh, you know, for, um, and from, from investors who were interested in, you know, looking into their, pro into their uh, project. So, um, you know, media, uh, it's a given. It's a great way to get your name out there. So this is um, a few of our social media platforms, some of the portfolios. So going back to what I was saying about the theme, if you remember that slide that had like the, the color combination, a theme is very important. So as you can see, um, a theme and pattern, it resonates to people, um, especially if you know, you're, it, and, and this is um, more specifically for Instagram, but to have like a re repetitive theme will let people kind of, automatically connect your brand to, you know, a picture or post that you put up. So here's an example of um, a theme that we did for a lifestyle client. So as you can see, um, you know, the, the client wanted, of course it was a sanitizer client. Um, and uh, we, we wanted people to kind of understand that, that, you know, there was a human touch to it, that it, it's not just like a, you know, a medical product or, you know, we don't want people to relate to san sanitizer to coronavirus. So it's very important, like the image, the story that you send out to people. Um, there's a lot of subliminal messages that you send here, you know, um, as you can see, there's a mother and her baby, there's a family, you know, people resonate to that. So depends what do you want people to resonate to when they see your brand and that's what, what you have to put out there on social media campaigns are a fantastic way to grab attention um we do quite a lot of giveaways um in fact when i first started twitter a couple of years ago um i i wasn't sure you know how, how would i even start with getting followers and i did one video saying oh, i'm gonna do a hundred dollar giveaway uh just uh you know follow me and tell me what's your favorite altcoin right now it's a crypto related giveaway and uh, i was giving away 100 bucks in uh, bitcoin and uh that just went viral um hundred thousand views within a week five thousand followers i mean you know it's it we we really think that it's important to grow yourself organically and uh, campaigns are a great way to do that. Um, we, there are different kinds of, uh, you know, campaigns. You can do competitions, you can do polls, uh, you can do events, uh, you know, charitable giveaways, partnerships, you know, uh, so, so yeah, there's a lot of different strategies that you can use. Next up, now this is uh, something that people also underestimate most of the time. The founder of the company is a representative of the project. So if you, if you have a company and, and you're the founder, you're the CEO, one of the co-founders, you want to put yourself out there. Um, if you see some of the greatest CEOs, Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, um, you know, Bill Gates, they really put themselves out there, they carry themselves, they, they represent the brand, they are the brand. So it's important to build an online presence for yourself as well, if you're a founder, if you're a CEO. It's, imagine if you have an amazing company and someone types your name on Google and you, know, you have nothing out there, or you, know, you have something that's uh, a bit strange out there, like a high school picture of yourself with your ex-girlfriend, you know? We don't want that. So we want to show that, you know, you, you are the brand, that you put yourself out there, that, that you know, you are representing the project as well. Um, and so we, 
always speak to our CEOs and we find that a lot of CEOs, they kind of just misjudge, like miscalculate the step and they think it's not important. Um, but uh, yeah, we do build a lot of CEO profiles um, and it doesn't mean that the CEO has to be out there and take a bunch of selfies of themselves, but it means that you have to, um, you know, speak about your brand, talk about it, um, you know, highlight what's going on, you know, be personal, uh, really relate to people, you know, show them that your brand is your baby and people will understand the value of your brand. Um, to do that, going back to, you know, the CEOs, um, uh, a good strategy is, is to join conferences, to speak, to speak in panel discussions, you know, um, you know, uh, so what we do is we give you like a three month schedule or you can plan in advance a three month schedule of the best conferences and reach out to these conferences and tell them what you're doing and, you know, you know, show them the really put yourself out there and speak to the audience. You know, um, people people might be inspired. You never know. Um, if you're too shy, we have a lot of um, you know CEOs that are too shy and they just don't want to put themselves out there. Well, we sometimes uh, provide brand ambassadors to represent the company um, on the founder's behalf. Um, we found this work really well. This worked really well in Asia. We had a client from China who um, didn't speak very good English and he was a bit conscious about it. So uh, he asked us to provide him with a brand ambassador who had knowledge of tech and knowledge and kind of, you know, studied his company and went up on stage and spoke on uh, spoke on his behalf. And and he was really satisfied and happy and, and felt at ease because I funny enough. Some people are more scared of public speaking than they are of death. So, um, so yeah, we understand that. You know, that that's totally fine. And um, yeah, that that's it, guys. Uh, that's it from me. Um, thank you so much for you know uh, having me. And uh, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to to answer them. Very great. Thank you so much for such a great session. So many helpful, very concrete tips. I think we all appreciated it very much, especially because it was so well-rounded. And I think uh, in addition to being applicable to the fintech industry, I think everyone can use and um, utilize the tips very well. Thank you. Yeah.